guys, Benny from Nomad Effect. We needed to replace the suspension on our FJ62 Land Cruiser because our old suspension was shot. We're going to be doing some off-road stuff and we're carrying a lot of weight in the back of the car. We've got a long range fuel tank. So the original suspension was just not going to cut it. There were three factors that we had to take into account when we were looking for new suspension. First one was budget because we just don't have a lot of cash and we don't make any money from any of the stuff we do. Second one was the amount of weight we were going to bring to the back of the car. And the third one was reliability because I don't want to buy something and then have to replace it really, really soon. So what we ended up settling on was Iron Man. There are a lot of brands that come out of Australia, like Old Man Emu, Terrain Tamer, and uh, Dobbinson's. And we looked at all of them. From a budget point of view though, Iron Man just came in at a better price. And what we were compromising on, we feel like we're okay to live with that in the short term. The kit that from Iron Man comes with polyurethane bushings for all of the leaf springs, a set of rear leaf springs, front leaf springs, U-bolt kits for all the way around, front shocks, and rear shocks. The compromise that we made was that we went for the nitro gas version of the shock absorbers. If we had gone for their premium shock absorbers, it would have taken the price up to sort of be in line with how much the Old Man EMU and the Dobbinson's kits actually cost. We made the decision to do this because we figured that if this actually lets us down, down the road, We'll just replace the shocks and we can get a different brand if these ones aren't sort of living up to the, the hype. The kit that we bought also is the 440 pound plus constant load because we're always going to have a lot of weight in the back of the car and we need to take that into account. So these are the, their most heavy duty set of leaf springs and that doesn't change no matter which kit you buy from. The kit ended up costing us around $1,200 delivered. We got a free set of recovery tracks with that. And I think online right now, if you check it out, they're about $879 delivered with the free set of recovery tracks. So if you guys are looking for some budget friendly shocks, I think these guys could be a go. If you'd like to wait, we will update you on what we think about this set of suspension. In order to install this suspension, there's a few things that didn't come with the kit. So these are something that you're gonna to have to source, whether it be from Iron Man or other brands. And basically it's all up to how much you can afford and what sort of reliability you're going for. The rubber pads that support the leaf springs in the rear suspension were completely shot when we got them out of our car. So we had to source new ones. I got in touch with a company called City Racer and they were able to supply us original Toyota rubber pads and these were not super expensive. There wasn't really many other options for me to get these and I've seen on YouTube videos that a lot of people don't actually reinstall these when they do the car. But we just want to keep everything as sort of Toyota intended. Another thing that you're going to need are shackles for the front and the back of the leaf springs. We bought this reasonable pin from Spectre Offroad and there are lots of different versions of these. Uh, Dobbinson sells some, all these different things. These were $5 each. They're greasable and they're a lot better quality than the original ones that came with the car. So we just went with these ones from a budget and reliability point of view. And the fact that we can grease these is gonna mean they're gonna last for a really long time. We've actually already created a video about this where we compared the original shackles that came with the leaf springs to the Dobbinson's ones that we got off our friend Mike. You can watch this video here. And these things are actually anti-inversion shackles. And like I said, we've gone into a lot of detail on these ones before, so check that video out. This is the situation in the world right now. We can't really go traveling or anything like that. And it's allowed us to spend a lot more time fixing things on the car that we probably wouldn't have on any normal occasion. So uh, all of the suspension components that we took apart on the car, we've uh, taken all of the loose rust off, we've treated it with a rust converter, and then we've hit it with POR15, so that when we put all this together, we're gonna get the longest life possible out of all this stuff that we bought. I don't know whether I, I would have done this if we weren't, we didn't have all the time in the world, but I really strongly recommend it. We're gonna start by installing the rear suspension. So the first thing I need to do is get the leaf springs in. There's a few options when it comes to inputting these leaf springs in because one is labeled driver's side and one is labeled near side. These are created for the Australian market where the driver's side is on the right hand side of the vehicle. The difference between the near side and the driver's side spring, the driver's side spring is slightly more arced than the near side spring. When you put them next to each other, as you can see right here, the driver's side sits about an inch higher than the near side spring. We had a discussion and we've made the decision because we're actually going to be using an Australian made rear tire carrier and a US made front bumper. So we're going to put the driver's side on the American driver's side. 
because we actually we have a battery on that side we have a long range fuel tank and we're going to be carrying two jerry cans full of fl fluid on that side of the car so i'm just trying to work out which side of the leaf spring goes forwards and which side goes backwards as a general rule the shortest distance between the center bolt and the end of the leaf spring is the one that goes to the fixed shackle which on our car is the, on the back is the one that's at the front so I'm just going to use this box here as a, an end point of the spring to work out which side is longer. This side is about 21 inches. And this side is about 2 feet, 25 inches maybe. So definitely the shorter side, this side, is the one that's going to go forward and on the fixed shaft. So my next step is to get the, these bushings mounted into the ends of the leaf spring so that the uh, shackle pins can actually go through them. I think that you're normally supposed to use a press to get these in, but I don't have a press, so let's see how we go. So I'm just gonna grease these up so it makes them easier to push in. Who needs a press when you got Benny? Because I'm just depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Boom. Done. to get the, the fixed spring hanger in. This is the, the brand new fixed spring hanger I bought and it's actually a greasable uh, pin. So what that means is that once this is in, I can actually get the grease gun, put it on the end of this little nozzle here and squirt grease in there so it keeps the, the spring lubricated. I'm just gonna put a, a little bit of grease on this uh, just in case later on, even though it is a greasable, greasable pin, that I can't get grease to the, these sections and especially on the sides here, I want it to be able to slide in to the newly painted um, hanger as nicely as possible. It's going right. Everything is going up, coming up in my house. <laughs> okay. Look how good we are. Look how good at this stuff we are. This is not. This is exactly not how I expected it to go. <laughs> For the rear spring hanger. I have uh, some anti-inversion shackles that I'm going to install, but I have to install the bushings into the, uh, the spring hanger that is attached to the frame first. So I'm just going to put some grease on these and get them in. These are the anti-inversion shackles that uh, we bought. They also have a greasable nipple on them, and then the nipple should be facing towards the uh, outside of the car, so that way you can access it and add grease to it whenever you want to. Next I'm going to get some grease up on, on, onto the top pin that's going to go through the hanger that's attached to the frame. I'm also going to put some grease onto the bottom pin. <clears throat> and hopefully this helps us get these through the bushings and up onto the car. Sort of installed. Boom. <laughs> sort of. Yeah, we just did a bit. Right. It's time to line up the the way that the diff sits on top of this spring. 
So the way the Toyota one works is there's this uh, this bracket here, and I've pre-installed a bit of rubber that goes uh, underneath it, and that situates on this little knob bolt. It's on top of the, the spring here. And the bottom one is gonna come in under here and situate on the bottom bolt, which is, I can't see it right now, but it's about there. And then the two U-bolts go over the top of this diff and they go down and through these holes here and everything bolts back up together. First, I've got to drop the diff down so it meets up with this rubber piece on the spring. And there's a hole here and there's a knob here and they're gonna meet up. So I've got this jack stand that I've had here for about, feels like a million years. And I'm gonna lower this jack down and I'm gonna to attempt to line this diff up with this rubber bump. It's getting really wet. Yeah, it's very wet. Oh, Florida. <laughs> oh, Florida. Is there like a Florida anthem or something like that? I feel like there should be. Uh, probably, I just... Where you're all ways moist. <laughs> So. Oh my god, it went in. It went in. <laughs> what a fluke. So hopefully that doesn't mean that that side is going to be real hard now because it's out of whack. Or maybe it's like going to be straight, right? No, because this spring is like, remember this spring? Oh, this spring is the pain in the ass. But so this spring is the one that's pointed in because of like this being twisted, right? So we might have to come up, come up with a way once this is put together to twist this back out. Gotcha. Which is fine. Just uh. I mean, either way, one of them is going to be a pain. So I may as well, may as well be that one. I can't believe you did it. This one's in the hole, the mm. one on your pinky. Mm. The one here is is not in the hole. Why? Because like, it's like. Is there a reason? Uh. Yeah, right. Okay. Now it is. Okay. Can you can you pass me the hole? There you go. Okay. Was it on camera? Because that was also pretty fluky. spring in and I've got the U-bolts done up to where I'm kind of happy with the tension that they're at and they could probably be done more but I'm pretty happy with they, where they are now. I'm going to attempt to install this uh, shock absorber. Uh, let's do this. So the first thing to do is to get the bushings in the top. So these go in like so. So. Do these need to be greased? Um, I don't know. What do you think? Degrees. It looks like he, they went in really easily, right? Doesn't say. See so any back reason? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. I don't see a reason to have them. I think that the inside needs to be greased. So I think the the part that it goes on needs to be greased because there is a man of this much, this much, but not the other way around. Um, so I've only got two of these. So which way did they go? Yeah. 
Definitely. Oh, it needs to be a little bit more then. Yeah? Nope. Huh? Nope. No, yeah. Okay, you're in. As you can see, this one's pretty much in. Got to like sort out if the tensioning of a few bolts and a few little things like that. But other than that, we're all good. So let's just jump to the other side and let's speed it up a little. Classic Florida, we got rained out. We had some technical difficulties. The diff wasn't lining up with the... Springs. Springs. So, <laughs> the, when we repaired the frame, the frame is now done this, which means that when we've attached the springs, the springs are also doing this, which means that they need to be done like this for it to line up to the diff, and it sucks. Yeah. We just got rained on hard. Yeah. Like that was like game off. So we are regrouping, sleeping, eating, and we will tackle this again tomorrow. See you then. So we're back. Back. It's been two days because in true Florida fashion, we just got rained out and have not been able to touch our car since we started to put the suspension in. So what happened is that we were, we got one side of this back suspension in, and then we went to go put on the other side of the suspension in, and then... We have a problem where when I fixed the uh, rear of the frame and I bolted in the new C-channel, it actually uh, lifted the insides of the C-channel this way. So when we reattached the spring hangers, the springs are now at an angle. And if you can see, they're both pushing in. So what I need to do is work out a way to push them both out so that it lines up nicely with the diff and then get everything bolted in. Is something with him. <laughs> Oh, 
so now if I do this, it should slowly push the the going the wrong way. No. Yeah, just so this should slowly push the springs out to where they need to be. Okay. See? Just uh, so you just get one started. Okay, so yeah, if you can just hold that for one sec, like that. Now get this restarted. Okay, and then one more on this side, and then we lined up. Hold up. We lined up on the. Hold up. Hold up. We lined up on that. There we are. There we are. Okay, and then let me just get this one started. Because then I can shuffle it into space, into place where it's supposed to be. Okay, so it's supposed to be there. I can push that down, and then I can screw that in. Hold it there. And then, so hang on. So now is that pushed up? Yeah. So, so, so it's just this side now. So it's the side closest to you of this plate. Huh? But I need you to hold because I'm gonna like make sure this one's like tightened up to level. Okay. Uh -huh. And we are on, babe. We are on. Like a fuck yes. suspension on and we're really excited. Feels like it's been such a long process to get to this point. I'm really happy with the way it's all kind of gone on. The uh, trying to fix my my um, the issues that I created by putting the, the reinforcement into the back of the frame. The shackles are a little bit twisted towards the inside but it sort of straightens out as the spring goes. I think that's going to work itself out down the road. I'm a bit disappointed because we've had two days of rain. I mean yes it's been torrential rain but I've already got a lot of surface rust sitting on these leaf springs. We're, we're trying out the, we're, we're trying to build this car on a budget. So we're gonna try and test these out for you guys. But I'm gonna let you know if this gets any worse and I don't wanna to have to fix this because we paid a lot of money for the suspension. So we'll just keep an eye on that as it goes forward.